Good morning. Good morning. And Happy New Year to all of you. What a blessing to begin the new calendar year with all of you. And thus our um, theme for this morning is thank you, Lord, for a new year. Thus we begin, we have a couple of hymns, New Year's hymns. So our first hymn is hymn 70, Help Us, O Lord, for Now We Enter. our sins to God our Father, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Holy and merciful Father, 
I confess that I am by nature sinful, and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil, and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray. Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. merciful to us and has given his only son to be the atoning sacrifice for all our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord. us to think earnestly on the brevity of our lives and on the immensity of your goodness. Help us to enter the new year trusting in the name of your Son and walking in the way of his peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. You may be seated. So our first scripture reading on this special Sunday is reported for us in the book of Lamentations, chapter 3, beginning with verse 22. And here we're reminded of that our life is a gift from God of His mercy. And 
we can praise the Lord that in his mercy we get to enter a new year. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. For his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I say to myself, the Lord is my portion, therefore I will wait for him. The Lord is good to those whose hope is in him, to the one who seeks him. It is good to wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. I invite the congregation to turn to page 99 in the front of the hymnal where we find Psalm 90. Page 99. And this is the Psalm of Moses where he brings out the tremendous contrast between time in our God's perspective and time in our perspective. It, he brings out how short our lives are and how we certainly need God's help and wisdom to use that time wisely. love, 
which ties things together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ control your hearts to which you were also called in one body and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom, singing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. And everything you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. This is the word of the Lord. Alleluia. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Alleluia. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the miraculous signs you are doing if God were not with him. In reply, Jesus declared, I tell you the truth, no one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. How can a man be born when he is old? Nicodemus asked. Surely he cannot enter a second time into his mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, I tell you the truth. No one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and the spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. How can this be? Nicodemus asked. You are Israel's teacher, said Jesus, and do you not understand these things? I tell you the truth. We speak of what we know, and we testify to what we have seen. But still you people do not accept our testimony. I have spoken to you of earthly things, and you do not believe. Then how then will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up, the snake in the desert, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. This is the Gospel of our Lord. confess our faith with the whole Christian church on earth by means of the words of the Nicene Creed. If you'd like to follow along, it's, it's on page 19. It actually, it starts on page 18. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, 
was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoke true to the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Congregation may be seated as we continue with Him 75. In 75, Father, let me dedicate all this year to you. Jesus, 
giving thanks to God the Father through him. This is the word of our great God. In Christ Jesus, who holds the whole world in his hands, my dear friends, whether we've participated in a wedding or not, I think we all know how carefully the bride works to pick out the perfect dress. Not only does she concentrate on a perfect dress for himself, herself, but she also wants to make sure that all her bridesmaids are dressed suitably for her wedding. And not only that, normally, I guess, we would say the bride's mom and, and even the future mother-in-law want to prob probably have brand new dresses for that occasion. So as important as that is, for the bride especially, perhaps, you and I know there's a far more important dress to have. That's how we are dressed, spiritually speaking. And in these incredible words for us, there's so much meaning in these four verses. In these incredible words, let's remind ourselves about proper clothing for the new year. First of all, we're encouraged here to put on love, and secondly, to put on peace. The Apostle Paul begins this letter in such a special way, he addresses it to the holy and faithful brothers in Christ at Colossae. They're, isn't it something? These were Gentiles. These were totally heathen people. Didn't have one clue about what God's Word says about Jesus, and probably never heard his name before in their lives. Now they're holy, brought to faith in Christ. And they're faithful. They don't just confess Jesus one day and forget about them the next. They're staying close to their Savior. They're faithful. And then later on, Paul says, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you and asking God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all spiritual wisdom and understanding. The Apostle Paul knows what you and I have observed too, right? People can grow up in the faith and, and make a beautiful confirmation promise. And pretty soon, where in the world are they? They take off. The devil leads people astray. We all need prayers to one another, don't we? We need another. The Apostle Paul has such love for every single believer that he keeps them in prayer. God help us all to pray for one another. So he's encouraging these Gentiles, most many of them are Gentiles. Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, what they grew up with, dear friends. It's hard for us to put ourselves in their shoes. They grew up with sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry because of these. The wrath of God is coming. Dear friends, might we wrestle with any of these things? Might we be failing to put to death these sinful desires that can arise in our hearts? Are we able to put into practice the words of our text? Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Did we See any grudges that arose in the year that is now past? And now, will we take those grudges into the new year? We're, we're encouraged to turn over a new leaf in the new year. Not to bear grudges to begin with, but that's not always easy, is it? We need help. We need the reminder that that is a sin. I believe we have to all confess. Yes, we've not always gotten rid of all the sin that pops up in our lives. And we all know, for the wages of sin is death. You see, my friends, why Jeremiah says God's mercy is new every morning and great is his faithfulness? You and I earn only death. So when we got out of bed this morning, that was another gift from God. Our hearts are still beating, our minds are still functioning. God's blessed us with another day. So just think of it, dear friends, that each day is a gift of God's grace, something none of us earn or deserve. 
than when we have an anniversary, a birthday, or a new year. Lots of days packed into that blessing. Lots of blessings. Blessings without number. His mercies are new every morning. His mercies are new when he gives us a new year to enter. And best of all, he's blessed us with his best, his own son, who is willing to take your sins and mine to Calvary's cross. And reminding us in John 15, greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. How dearly loved each and every one of us is. Jesus did that for each of us so that you and I can rest assured no matter what this year holds, even if we should have shocking news like a, an acquaintance of mine in Fort Atkinson, healthy, strong, hard worker, goes to the doctor, shock of shocks, filled with cancer, he's given a week or two to live. God forbid that that's going to happen to us this year, but none of us knows. But if it would, we don't have to worry because even though the wages of sin is death, the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. You and I don't have to worry about the future. We don't have to worry about when God decides our work here is done. We are in good hands. And of course, even though we see all kinds of changes, horrible changes sometimes taking place, the best never changes. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. Did Jesus love us yesterday? Goes without saying. He certainly did. Does he love us the same today? He gave us another day, didn't he? Yes, and he loves us just as much today as he did yesterday. And will he love us tomorrow? Yes, he will never change. He will love us every day he gives us for an eternity. Therefore, with all those blessings, therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved. Beautiful words, aren't they? Clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Wonderful spiritual clothing as we enter a new year. Let's take a closer look at those qualities. Clothe yourselves with compassion. Compassion. We have an example of with King David. He wasn't king yet at the time. He was running for his life still. The village where he lived, Ziklag, had been attacked while they were out with the 600 men. They came back and they cried all day long. Wives, children, all taken, all their goods gone. Actually, the town was all burned down. God revealed that they could catch him and rescue the wives and children. So they took off, and they attacked at night, except for 200 of the men, of the 600 men, were too tired to go any further. God blessed them with a, with a victory and brought everything back, all the booty, all of the, all of the wives and children. And some of the wicked ones were saying, those 200 that didn't go out to battle, they only get their wives and children. They, they don't get any of the goods. You know what David said? He had compassion on these 200 men. He said this, all will share alike. Remember the saying, share and share alike? Isn't that something? It comes from the Bible. So David had compassion. Clothe yourselves with kindness. Perfect example is Jesus, right? How he had compassion, how he had kindness for that widow of name, remember it? It touches one's heart. He happens, happens to go to Nain at the very time when a young man is being led out in funeral procession, and he's the only son of this widow. Imagine that, especially in those days. And the Bible says Jesus' heart went out to her. It's something he has a heart for every one of us, too. His heart went out to her, so he stopped the funeral procession and said, Young man, I tell you, arise, and he gave him back to his mother. Our great Savior's in charge of life and death. We don't have to worry. He can perform miracles. He can bring the dead back to life again. Clothe yourselves with compassion. 
Clothe yourselves with kindness. And clothe yourselves with humility. Not always easy to be humble. Might we be tempted to be like the rich man who invited Jesus over, that, that Pharisee? And the Pharisee had to learn by a lowly sinner whom he looked down on, despised. And that sinful woman washed Jesus' feet with her tears, dried him with her hair, anointed him with oil. Remember the thoughts of that Pharisee? Jesus knew who was touching him. He would be upset. So Jesus had to teach that proud, cocky man a lesson. She did what he failed to do. A common courtesy in those days. You may remember that. A common courtesy. If someone visited your home, was you would wash their feet or have a servant to wash their feet. This proud, cocky man who thought he knew it all knew nothing. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords in his house. Doesn't even show him common courtesy. And Jesus teaches him a lesson on humility. This woman loved much because she was forgiven much. Praise God that we know we all need lots to forgive. Hold yourselves with humility. Also hold yourselves with gentleness and patience. I couldn't help but think of Joseph and Mary. Isn't that something? Can you imagine not being able to find a 12-year-old in a huge city like Jerusalem and frantically searching high and low for their son? And finally, you remember well, finally, they find him in the temple. Maybe it's a little harder to be upset when he's in God's house. But I don't know. But don't you marvel how gently and how with patience they dealt with Jesus, both Mary and Joseph? Joseph doesn't say anything. He lets Mary do the talking. And she just says, Jesus, why did you do this? We were searching all over for you. Remember his response? Well, why were you looking for me? Didn't you know? I have to be about my father's house, my father's business. Everything pertaining to his heavenly father. A gentle reminder, Joseph, I'm not going to be a carpenter. You know he's a perfect worker. And Mary, I'm not going to be a, a, a servant to take care of everything in the house. I'm going to be honoring the mission for which I came. A gentle reminder to his parents how to dress ourselves with gentleness and with Humility. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. So all those different characteristics that were mentioned earlier, compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, they're all aspects of love. So that one word, love, includes all of the above, binds them all together, as the Apostle Paul writes. And don't we marvel at the love for God where it all starts that Abraham had, commanded by God to sacrifice that one he had waited for 25 years. Finally, at age 100, he's blessed with Isaac. Now, take him as a young man, sacrifice him on, the, on Mount Moriah. Abraham proved he loved his Lord more than his son. What a test. And what a reminder, dear friends, to love our God most of all. And show it by making sure we have proper clothes for the new year. Yes, and making sure no grudges from 2020 enter into the new year. Or in, in Jesus, we have the strength to forgive as the Lord forgave us. Proper clothing for the new year? Yes, put on love. Secondly, put on peace. Paul writes, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body, you are called to peace. Let the peace of 
Christ rule in your body. What a blessing. When Jesus is reigning there and reigning with his peace, the Prince of Peace there, your hearts and mind are so blessed. Like Isaiah writes, you will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast. Why? Because they trust in you. So trust in the Lord forever. Trust the Lord. The Lord himself is the rock eternal. There's a solid foundation for having peace ruling in our hearts. And, and what blessings that provides for us in our lives. So we don't have to worry. We don't have to worry about what this new year will hold. Like the saying goes, we don't know what the future holds, but we do know who holds the future. Did you know that earlier in this letter, the Apostle Paul says that Jesus is the creator of all things, and he holds everything together. He sustains all things as he rules over all things in heaven and on earth. That children's song, he holds the whole world in his hands, isn't just a nice song. It's true. And he holds you and me safe in his hands as well. So, ruling in his heart, what peace that we don't have to worry about the future, or anything for that matter. And what confidence that gives to you and me as we, under God, make plans for what we can accomplish for the Lord, for our families, for others, maybe even start a mission and in Deerfield together, if not in person, then in our prayers, as we pray for the spreading of God's word here and around the world. So very important, because Judgment Day, as we know, can come any time. But peace to know if things go to pieces in our lives or if things go to pieces in the world. We're still at peace, because Jesus reigns. He'll take care of it. So how do we do all that? Keep that peace reigning? Ah, here's the answer. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. And you all know how that happens. It doesn't happen just to have a, a Bible on our shelf or on the coffee table as a decoration. It happens certainly by hearing and learning the word of God together on Sunday morning. And if we don't already, making sure our Bibles are open to read every day. Make it a daily habit if it isn't already, so that the Word of God can dwell in us richly, overflow. And that's what will help us with our, our purpose in life. And maybe even memorize some passages, so that when we're tempted to worry, we can say, get behind me, Satan, trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. So, our purpose Teach and admonish one another. So keep on growing in faith and love. Ah, we need one another's prayers, don't we? Keep on praying for one another so that we can teach and admonish one another. Help one another. Help one another grow in our understanding with all wisdom and as you sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. Show our gratitude as we praise Him even in our everyday lives. And whatever you do, another goal for the new year, whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Whatever you do. It's the football season, and I thought of this young man I heard about when we were living in Lincoln, Nebraska many years ago, eight blocks from the Cornhusker Stadium. And a young man caught a pass toward the end of the game. It was a miracle because he was able to run in for the touchdown and because of that touchdown, they won the game. But a greater miracle happened because as he was being interviewed, he asked him, was that exciting? He said, yeah, that was exciting. But not as exciting as the day I became a Christian. That athlete, that hero for the team, was a true hero in God's family. To remind everybody who is listening what the real joy, what peace reigns in our hearts, what great dress we have when we 
have the proper clothing for the new year. Put, putting on love, putting on peace. For Jesus' sake. So yes, the bride is very particular about her dress. Dear friends, let's you and me be even more particular about the spiritual dress, spiritual clothing we wear for a truly happy new year in Jesus. Amen. And the peace of God, which is beyond our dreams, shall guard and keep our hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. And now, since we're uh, worshiping our Lord by leaving our offerings in the entryway, let's uh, invite you to stand as we pray the New Year's responsive prayer, which is found in your worship folder. So join in that responsive prayer together. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for bringing us safely to the conclusion of 2020. You have kept your promise. You have never left us nor forsaken us. Heavenly Father, we dedicate 2021 to you. Help us live entirely for you. Enable us to trust in you completely, like Abraham did. Grant us your Holy Spirit, that in 2021 we may Put on love. That we may imitate our Savior to always share encouraging words. Forgive us. We haven't always clothed ourselves with heartfelt compassion. Move us like the Good Samaritan to be there to help others, even those who may hate us. Help us to be more like Stephen, who prayed for those who were stoning him. Yes, help us to forgive, just as Christ forgave us. Bless us so that, like Mary, we know it's most important to listen to Jesus. Let his word dwell in us richly, that we may teach and admonish one another. In 2021, help us to be more like Isaiah, so that when there are opportunities to serve, will answer, here I am, send me, send me. Grant that like Andrew, we and all believers may lead a brother or sister closer to Jesus. Bless our outreach efforts in Deerfield. Preserve these solemn nations so that our missionaries can go forward, sharing the gospel without hindrance. Bring many more to the knowledge of their Savior, using every method available. Prosper the work of our hands, so that whether in word or deed, we do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. In the name of Jesus our Savior, we pray, and in His name we join to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. When he given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. As we continue on page 23, the peace of the Lord be with you always.
ABC, and as we continue with him, 38, and our pianist will pause after verse 3, just to let everybody know where we're at and singing the verses of that hymn. This is a hymn by Martin Luther, and a, a, a wonderful way to summarize why Jesus came on the first Christmas, and how he's such a great blessing to every person in every land. We invite the congregation to arise as we continue with the song of Simeon on page 24. to the Lord, for he is good. We give thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us with this Holy Supper. We pray that through it you will strengthen our faith in you and increase our love for one another. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. may be seated as we conclude with 64, let us all with gladsome voice. Mm -hmm. 